drummers and as musicians, there is a tool you can all use and you can download. Um, don't make it a marriage, but use it. It's called a metronome. And the reason why metronomes are great because they're great tools to check where you are in your learning. It's like a grade, grading system. So I use a metronome and I start very slow. You know, I'm sure some of you are familiar with this. Think, think, think. even even playing Malakatun, I started playing it very slow. And then as I got more comfortable with it, I speed up. But the key is to whatever you're doing, whatever you're practicing, always record yourself. Because you never sound as good as you think you do. Many right-handed drummers, the right hand is louder than the left hand when they play. They don't know it. Left-handed drummers play a lot of left hand. If you're supposed to play even, both hands have to be even. This, this is an ambidextrous instrument. You can use it any way you want. There's no one way to play this instrument. One of the most ambidextrous instruments I think invented. So use the, use the metronome, record yourself, make sure things are clean and even, whatever you're practicing, and when you're comfortable at 90 beats per minute, and you try to go to 95. And at 95, you should sound just as good as you do at 90. If you do not, go back to 93, and you work your way until you can play it as fast as you want to play it. That's what I do with my hands and my feet. I make sure I'm solid. Um, the other thing is some people you work with have very good timing, certain singers especially, so they can hear everything when you're doing wrong, when you're too loud. So, the drummer is the leader of the band. I'm gonna just say it. We lead from the back of the stage. If the drummer is not good, the band usually is not good. The band, I jokingly say, is like a single mom. You have to make sure everybody is cool. People aren't gonna say thank you, and they're probably not going to give you the credit for it, but the drummer has to keep everybody in line. The bass player, the trumpet player, the singer. So we have to do it. It's a very selfless job. You have to give yourself, give yourself. Sometimes nobody wants you to have anything, but that's the role of this instrument. You are controlling speed, dynamics, volume, all of those things. So in lieu of that, having great time, having great dynamics is a very important thing. If you look at any band you like, the drummer has to be a great band for the band to be great. The singer could be good looking and whatever, that's true, that's all fine. The beat is off, the song is not happening. So this instrument also has a huge responsibility and a very selfless one of being able to understand the other personalities on stage and how to make everybody feel good. So the metronome will help you, will help you with that. And keep it like you would keep anything else. Chart it out. September, you're 90. November, you're 95. January, you're 110. So you know, oh, it took me three months to increase my speed. It took me six months to increase my speed. I put it on my wall, still today. No, no computer, pen and paper, boom, boom. I can look at it and know, okay, it's, it, it's taking me too long, learning curve, or, or I'm struggling with this, I need more time. That's why I recommend both the pen and paper and the metronome, so you can, you can have a good solid balance. I have a management company where I don't manage artists, but I have a management company where I assist artists in managing them, because I still like to play and go out. Really good managers should just be managers. They shouldn't be musicians at the same time. It's a hard work job, to what it is. COVID obviously has had a huge impact on everyone's life and their career. So I teach in a few schools, but I also teach from home, a lot, online. Um, the technology is still challenging with Zoom sometimes, but uh, my idea is to, is, to, is to work from home and travel, like coming here. Next time I come here, I want to have a schedule arranged, and we can have a program set up, and we can do more things than this. Maybe there's some private lessons, drum questions, or maybe you can do smaller groups of three, four, or five, instead of having everyone together. We can do a week or something like this, or four or five days, and four students at a time. You can get more to what you're really weak in, what you really want to learn. This, this may be like a better concept. So. That's my idea. I, I did a recording with, uh, with uh, uh, Sodi Kondi. I, I heard about Sodi Kondi in a documentary film uh, five years ago. 
and he blew my mind. And we were here doing the African ancestry trip, and one of the young camera guys asked me from Eminence, from this Eminence company, he asked me, do you know any uh, musicians from my country? I said, I know one that I'm crazy. When I saw him, it was crazy. And I said, sorry, Kondi. He said, oh, this guy lives near my house. This is how spirit, this is how the ancestors work. So I said, can you call him now? He called him, can we go into the studio tomorrow? And he said, sure. There was no drums in the studio. I took a towel, I shoved it in the guitar to make it quiet. I turned the guitar upside down like a beatbox. I took this broom that you guys use here, that straw tie broom, and I put the side of the guitar and I bang with my hand and we did some music. Which I'm gonna post. Because to me, Sorry Grundy is like a Stevie Wonder, to me. I don't know how he is for you, but when I saw him in this documentary, his music was amazing, he builds his own instruments, it's amazing, his voice is incredible, and it, to me it was, it, it was uh, life changing to, to see him. So to meet him, to have him say, sure, I'll come over, and he came over, and it was just very organic, and I didn't know, we didn't know each other, we had one microphone, we put it between us, and we recorded three songs. So I'm gonna post that when you go to my Instagram or something. We'll see. Then your question is really brilliant because what I was, what, what, to learn and to grow, it's very important, I still do it. You have to go in both directions. You are here in Sierra Leone, I've seen indigenous drummers here, and you should definitely connect with them and learn those patterns. Even if you don't play djembe, you don't play, even if you take your phone and you just record them playing, learn those patterns because just like Gina explained, that's the grandfather and grandmother of this. And if I know this, if, if you know that information, you're gonna be so much more powerful on this instrument. You're gonna be able to combine it because this comes from that. So how do I do it? I, I learn in both directions. I love electronic music. I love drum machines. I'm studying drum machines. I program, I make beats for rappers. But you also come here and play with Sordi Kondi. You have to do both. It's gonna make you a very balanced drummer. So that's your student and that's fantastic. And, and, and uh, um, if you need some more information, we can get you some more personal things. But I would say definitely study the tradition. It's very important. I can't explain to you more than how important. That, that's going to help you go further. I'm gonna give these to you. Come on, this means you're gonna keep playing, right? Okay, that's for you. Everyone in here who's studying music, no matter what you're playing, you should learn the piano or the guitar or both. It's the most important part of your career. You must learn melodic instrument. You must know how to play chords and know how melody works and how harmony works. This is a very important part. A, of writing your own music and expressing yourself. B, when somebody gives you their music, you, you, can, you, you have a reference, you understand what it is. I write on different things. Uh, drum machines, I play a little bass, I play a little a guitar, and I play a little piano. And I study the chords and things too, but I also am inspired by sound. I might just make a loop. After the loop, I put a bass line on there. After the bass line, I put some chords down. After the chords, I put a little lead line with the melody. And you build it like you build a recipe when you're cooking food, it's the same thing. So I don't go into songwriting saying, this is a love song. This is a rock song. This is a jazz song. Because when you bring your music to other people, they're going to interpret it a certain way. And you have to be open-minded about how you're going to have it. You know, maybe you play bass, and the brother next to you plays keyboard. And I have my song, and I say, this is Maraca too. And I give it to you, you don't hear my too. Maybe you hear it as a song. Maybe you hear it as hip hop. So you have to bounce the ideas around. Song structures are just like a recipe. You have to make the meal. If you want to cook something hotter, longer, you know, more salt, less salt. That's how you compose, really, for me. I never approached any song by saying, I want to write a rock song or a jazz song. Or... Now, yes, there are things. But it's very important that you learn the harmonic side of music. Piano or guitar. It's very, very important. It's going to make you 
better position, you're going to be able to hear things and go, oh, I know what that is, I know what to play. The greatest musicians in the world normally play at least two or three instruments, so they can relate to music two or three ways. How do you know is you have to create it, and it's also, don't be shy to go, excuse me, excuse me, bass player. I need the, I need the tonic, I need the bass notes, I don't need the other, I'm the piano player, I can do that. And it's not offensive, it's just creating a relationship. A musical dialogue is the right term to use. And when people understand your musical dialogue, when they call you to play gospel, they'll know what you like, and they'll know your area, and they'll stay out of your area. So it begins with how we play, and it ends with a conversation. Sometimes when I don't know musicians, I don't like to assume something, but I will say sometimes on this song, I want the bass player to play the bass because of the structure. So to answer the question, it, it begins with how you play and you being the keyboard player. The drums are the leader, the keyboard is the organizer. All of the voicings for everything that happens is on your fingers, right? Every key, every note, every chord. You have totally every, you and the guitar, everything's there. What the singer's gonna do, what the bass player's gonna do, you, you have it all in front of you. So you have to take a role to say, this is what I want to do. If I play E minor seven, I want this in the bass. If I want A sharp 11, I want, if I want to C triad, I want to start on E, G and C, not C, E and G. You say what you want. And then you, you'll start to, people will start to understand the sound better. It just saves time. I have to find a way to know how to deal with it, where I can be relaxed and be successful and do what I have to do. I don't let it get in the way. So it's a great question. I think it's something that, uh, um, you know, you're gonna experience that, being a Sirioni and being a young lady. You're gonna get it from more than one direction. And you have to know how to deal with that too. So this is the, this is the, this is the reality of it. But um, when you're born in America, or what really is North America, and fortunately, I had a beautiful childhood. You have to be a blind elephant not to know that. You know the second you're born. You see how your parents behave. You see what goes on the church. You see the politics. The first time I was a little kid, and I went to play with the other kids in the park, one kid called me a name. I knew it was, I was different then. I also knew how to deal with that kid. So you know early on what it is. And you have to, uh, and what I teach my children is the N-word is navigate. Not the N-word you hear a lot of rappers use. The N-word is navigate. You have to learn how to navigate yourself so you remain on top. You don't get distracted because the idea is for you to get distracted. So you don't complete your job. You don't continue being great. That's all it's set up for you to do. It's just to take you off out of your focus lane. And I learned from Muhammad Ali, watching him fight watching him talk. He's the first black man I saw get on television and say, I'm pretty, I'm beautiful. I can beat you and fix my hair and do an interview. This empowered me as a kid. I never heard any black man say he was beautiful on TV. Only heard it in my house. This guy was a superstar and he, and he came to my neighborhood with no security and, took, and got a haircut in the barbershop and was playing around with us. So I, Muhammad Ali for me was Greatest of all time as a fighter, but even greater as a human being. He gave it all up for what he believed in. He gave it all up. Same thing, it's the drive. What is it gonna take you? How are you gonna navigate it? He dealt with racism, as did Miles Davis, as did Yusu Endor, as did Sally Kekla, everybody I mentioned here today. I talked to every artist, Stevie Wonder, they all, and Prince, they all deal with it. How are you going to navigate yourself in that kind of environment? You're gonna let it beat you and defeat you, or are you going to overcome it? That's the question you have to ask yourself. And uh, with Living Color, it was easy because I had three guys who felt the same way I did. And sometimes we played for eight people or two people. And we went from there to play for 60,000 people. So it, 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 the, the eight people were more important to me than the 60,000 because those eight people, it was, it was this was happening. Right? So you have to navigate yourself. What do you want, how do you want to get? Because if you wait for uh, this legislation is going to get passed, I want somebody to love me, it's not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I prefer to 
navigate and be prepared for the good times and the bad times? It's a very, very good question, and it's a very important one. And it's one people can assume you could do the wrong way, but it's, it's very important that you know that, young lady, that you know that, what, you, what you're going to be dealing with and how to deal with it. That's why I want to turn you into Vera and these other ladies, because if you contact them, they're going to tell you some very important things you'll need to know to be a young lady and to play this instrument. They're going to tell you things I can't tell you. They're going to tell you some very important things I can't say with that will really help you more than I can help you. That's why I want to connect you with them. So I want to thank everybody really for, for coming out today. I really do appreciate it. Uh, and this is a school. And I will let everyone know.